Yo, what up guys? So now we're going to be talking about a new concept, the transformations of functions. And this concept might actually be the biggest concept in this grade, because not only will it be used in this grade, it will also be used in advanced functions in grade 12. Uh, in grade 12, I'll probably be referring you back to these videos. Now, if you recall to the parent function overview video, what we said was that we had a parent function and then from it we would derive different family functions. Well, to be more specific, those family functions are basically transformations of the parent function. So let's say we have a general parent function f of x, then if we transform it, it would take the form a f of k x minus d plus c, where a, k, d, and c are just any kind of number. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail yet about what each letter means, but basically what we're doing is we're taking a very basic parent function and transforming it, whether that's moving it right, left, up, down, compressing it, stretching it, etc., etc. So I took two parent functions that we've already discussed, x squared and the square root of x, and I transformed them into these two functions. So for now, what I want to practice is recognizing what letter each number in the transformation corresponds to. Now, if you look at the general transform function again, and specifically look at this a value, notice how the a value is always attached to the function, whatever the function would be, this f here. However, it's sort of outside of it. So if we go back to our specific examples, notice how the parent function is x squared and it corresponds to this whole bracket squared. And outside of that function is this three and it's attached to it. So the a value in this case is three. Let's go to this function. The parent function is the square root of x. So when we transformed it, we're square rooting this whole new expression here. However, attached to it on the outside is this five. So the a value in this case is five. Now going back to our general transformation, I'm gonna talk about this whole portion in the bracket here, this k bracket x minus d. And this is the trickiest part to explain. So I'm gonna do my best, try to follow along as best as you can. So basically, what we're doing is we're taking a function f of x, and for that specific x value in the brackets, we're subbing in this k bracket x minus d. So if we go to our specific example, notice how for the x value in x squared, we're subbing in this big bracket 2 bracket x minus 4 right, because this two bracket x minus four is being squared. So we took that and subbed it in for the x value. So this two bracket x minus four corresponds to this k x minus d portion. So notice how the two represents the k value and the four represents the d value. Now moving on to our second example, notice how for the x value in the square root function, we subbed in this 2x plus six. However, I added a little trick in there because this 2x plus six, even though we subbed in that expression for the x value, so it should correspond to this k x minus d, it's not in the same form because notice how the x is by itself, there's nothing in front of it. We factored out a k from this x minus d expression. So we have to do the same thing here. We have to make sure that the x value is by itself. And we'll go over examples in uh, future videos where we'll elaborate on that. But you gotta make sure, you'll run into questions where you'll have to factor out the k value to get the x by itself. So if we factor out a two from this two x plus six, we're left with x plus three minus four. So the k value in this case is two. 
and the d value is negative 3 because it's in the form x minus d. So x minus d, and if we have x plus 3, we have to put it in the form x minus d, so it would be x minus negative 3, right? The two negatives turn is, are the same as a uh, positive, so the d value is negative 3. So be careful with any positives. You always got to make sure that the d value is a corresponding negative. And finally, going back to the general transformation, let's deal with the C value. The C value is always a value that's added or subtracted on top of this whole expression. It's kind of not attached to the expression, it's, it's outside of it. So this x squared corresponds to this function here, and notice how this plus 5 is kind of outside of it, it's just added on. So the C value in this case is positive 5. And then same thing here, notice how this minus 4 is just subtracted to it, but it's not attached to the f, right? The c value is not attached to the f. So the c value in this case is negative 4. Now at this point you might be a little confused as to why we're doing all of this. You might actually be still confused about the process. And that's okay. We're going to get a lot more practice in the future videos and going through this process again and it's going to become a lot more clear. So for now I just wanted to expose you initially in recognizing what each letter is in a transform function. And in fact in the next four videos what we're going to do is we're going to go through each of these letters separately, this A, K, D, and C, and talk about how they specifically affect a parent function, what type of transformation it represents, etc., etc. So make sure you go ahead and watch those because you will be getting tested on it for sure.